This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This video is all on frost weathering. It is a type of mechanical or physical weathering. And this video is going to look at um, what happens when frost gets into rock, uh, what is going to occur, and the different types of uh, features and effects that this can have on the rocks to break it down into small, small pieces. And we're going to look at the combination of frost weathering with other mechanical and chemical weathering types, uh, how they work together to uh, efficiently uh, erode and break down the rock into small and small pieces. All right, so this is a type of mechanical or physical weathering, as discussed. So if we're looking at frost weathering as a topic that is in three parts, Okay, the first part is going to be freeze thaw. Okay, next one is going to be frost wedging. All right, and the final one is going to be shattering. So these three are all to do with obviously the temperature, the climate, the terrain, and rock type. And it is in conjunction or working together with other mechanical or physical uh, weathering methods in order to break down the rock so what do we need first we need first for these three um types of frost weathering to work we need to form cracks or small breaks in the rock obviously if it's a plain solid rock it's not going to work uh the water needs to go into the cracks and from there the temperature is going to drop and the water is going to turn from liquid to uh, solid, so a phase change, and you start to form the uh, the ice, and this ice is in, and this is where it all begins. So freeze thaw. If we have a layer of rock, let's say this is our crust, this is our surface, we have a layer of rock, okay, and we get the exposure to the elements. Let's say we get thermal expansion, and we get the um, increase in volume as it gets hot and we get the contraction of rock when it gets cold so cold is contraction and hot is uh expansion right the increase in volume based on temperature so this would eventually form cracks cracks in the rock cracks or small breaks in the rock, right? So right there. So now we have some kind of precipitation, some rain, sleet, or kind of drizzle, or you have an uh, input of water into the area. Now water is going to go over the land or come down from the atmosphere through gravity, and it's going to find its way through gravity down into the cracks. Okay. Now uh, uh, seep through or Go straight into the cracks. So what's going to happen is water is going to come out and water is going to be right here. Okay, so it's right here. Water in these cracks again. All right. So now let's say we have our internal time with our temp changes from day to night. It turns to night time. It gets cold, and that water is going to freeze. Okay. So sub sub 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius and that water is going to phase change to ice. That ice occupies more volume. Actually about nine percent large volume of ice because of the, uh, the chemical bonding between the, the atoms actually uh, increases in volume with the same amount of matter therefore density drops down but that's why ice floats However, ice occupies a larger space, larger volume. Therefore, that crack that was small originally, that crack that is small originally will start to get larger and larger. Because every time the water, the water gets in, it's going to freeze. And then when it come, comes back to being daytime again, it's going to melt and become water. And then at nighttime, freeze. And this freeze thaw cycle that repeats over a long period of time, be a season or a whole year or 
thousands of years, that rock, that crack, will get larger and larger and larger, more and more water, more and more ice, and larger volume, and it'll eventually just start to break down that rock. So we can see this right here on this diagram, okay, this picture of this beautiful, large, like rocky boulder on this landscape. Could be a glacial erratic, could be just uh, remnants of a flood, ancient flood, or strong activity, or land, or a rockfall. But you have, uh, this was originally part of the rock. There was no crack here. But over a long time of the water getting in to a crack, then eventually turned to ice over time and actually just cracked and broke and created this lovely fracture and joint all the way through to eventually breaking the rock into smaller pieces just by using um, ice and water over long periods of time. Now, frost wedging uh, talks about actually uh, ice being like a, a um, huge pickaxe and basically forcing its way through a crack and basically dislodging pieces of rock. Now, this usually happens on a slope. So if I'm going to just draw, so here's my slope. All right, and here are my cracks or even broken bits of rocks. So in comes, in comes any kind of rainfall or any kind of overland flow through the gradient and slope um, down to a lower elevation. And you have the water coming down here. And it's basically going to, you know, over short, you know, short times, and turn to ice, that 9% increase in volume. And it's going to break apart these sections of rock and force the rock this way, push the, the rock out through the increase in volume of the ice, and create this kind of like uh, mass wasting or mass movement uh, situation where the rocks are going to uh, fall or creep downhill, down the slope. Again, the gradient is going to dictate the speed and the energy involved with gravity and it's going to fall down the slope and form various features. So this forms talus. Talus is debris. Talus is debris that has been uh, deposited or fallen or moved uh, down the slope, the hill, the mountain, usually in high gradient areas, so very steep areas and the talus has accumulated at the bottom of this mountain or or hill in a fan shape so let's say that this, this is the mountain right okay the fan shape it would start generally in a smaller area and fan out like this so there comes so it comes like this and it's like like that so it's going to fan out and basically um move out down with gravity and create this like area of debris with different sized rocks all accumulated because of the frost wedging on the slope. So the last one is frost shattering. Now shattering uh, denotes a more aggressive, more aggressive uh, attack on a rock, perhaps a more more um, you know uh, distinctive or a larger crack that kind of splits the rock in a more obvious um, way or pattern compared to maybe a freeze thaw. So this is really uh, just a different example of a freeze thaw whereby you've got the hot versus the cold temperatures Day and night seasons, uh, change of change of uh, let's say elevation through large or long scale tectonic activity or orogenies, and what you have is just the rock being exposed to you know the, the water finds its way through the pores, through uh, in between the uh, the beds of the rock or the strata of the rock, and basically. Um, freezing, causing the ice, the 9% volume increase, 
and you have this, the, the very distinctive split and the breaking down of the rock. So this one here could be a frost shattering example over here on the right hand side. Also, this picture in the middle with the uh, frost wedging, you've got all these different, you know, very steep slope, but you have all these different separate rocks uh, and, and uh, different sizes. We have the obvious um, joint and fracture between the rocks there uh, that the water can get into and start acting upon. But frost shattering is another example of freeze thaw. So as a review, you've got the three types. You've got frost shattering, frost wedging, and freeze thaw, all to do with um, water freezing and come in contact with pore spaces or fragments or cracks in the rock that are there due to maybe the addition of other um, mechanical or physical weathering, or even maybe there from some chemical weathering in the past. But there's obvious cracks. Water goes in, freezes, and the rest is the uh, breaking down of rocks. So think of like a, like a big sledgehammer being shoved into a crack, and then you just basically push and uh, separate the rocks into small and small pieces. This is Frost Weathering. Thanks for listening, and hope you subscribe and check out the other videos in the series.